And furthermore, I'd like to make another point clear at this point, Flint. I don't think there's an archaeological cons conspiracy against me. <laughs> I'm not so conceited. I don't imagine there's a conspiracy. I don't think archaeologists are sitting together in a cabal conspiring against me. I think that archaeology is locked into a mindset about the past where my ideas simply seem preposterous. And I think it's very annoying to archaeology that those ideas have some resonance uh, with, the, with the public. But I absolutely refute any suggestion that I have ever said that archaeology is involved in a conspiracy against me or is trying to suppress my work. That is, that is not the case. Um, look, there's the Sahara Desert. A uh, fair bit of archaeology has been done in the Sahara Desert, but we're looking at 9.2 million square kilometers of the Sahara Desert. Tell me how much of the Sahara you think has actually been excavated, Flint, by archaeologists. I'd say a bunch of it has been surveyed, including by my dad. No, no, no. How much has, how much has actually been excavated? What sort of percent well, do you have? Well, a lot mind? of sort of desert archaeology does not have excavation. It's eroded away due to the wind. Oh, so, what, so what's your answer to my question? How, did, how, how much does archaeology really know about the past of the Sahara? Well, we understand about the domestication of pearl millet in the Sahara from when the Sahara was a much more, uh, much of it was actually more habitable because it was not desert. So we can see the domestication of pearl mill and sorghum. No. We can see my ice question age is, sites My question it. is related to specifically to my subject. Has enough of the Sahara been excavated for archaeology to exclude any possibility that they've missed anything important in the Sahara? We have found thousands of sites of ephemeral hunter-gatherer remains in the Sahara. You're still not answering my question. How much of the Sahara has archaeology actually looked at? I have no idea, but quite a bit, Graham. <laughs> what, what do you mean by quite a bit? What I mean is that due to remote sensing, due to surface survey, and due to archaeological excavation, we actually have reasonable coverage across the Sahara. We understand that during green periods in the Neolithic, we can see agricultural villages. And before the Neolithic, we can find ephemeral hunter-gatherer camps where they were napping stones. Mm. But the fact of the matter is, around about 1% of the Sahara has been excavated, uh, and 99% hasn't. Uh, so to say that there's no possibility of any traces of a lost civilization in the Sahara seems to me a bit uh, premature, particularly since during the African humid period, and there were several of them, the Sahara was uh, green and fertile. Uh, and was uh, a very attractive environment in, in which to live. I, I might come on to the ancient maps issue, but there's an ancient map up there which shows a green and fertile Sahara, and oddly it uh, coincides very much with a radar survey of the Sahara done in, done in 2015, showing river channels in exactly the places shown in that ancient map. I think the Sahara is a fascinating, underserved area by archaeology. Uh, and the plain fact of the matter is it's very expensive to work there. It's very difficult to work there. And archaeology has done very little work in the Sahara. Not no work, not no work, but very little. Not enough to write off the possibility that evidence might be found in the future. You know, you're basing this on our technology now. Let's look 200 years in the future. Look how much archaeology has pr progressed in the last 50 years. 200 years in the future, the technologies might be so much more advanced. There's so much stuff that has simply not been looked at. And the Sahara is one of those underserved areas, as far as I'm concerned. So is the Amazon, uh, 6.7 million square kilometers, about five and a half still covered by rainforest. Uh, it's bigger than, bigger than India. Uh, and, um, well, here's an article from Nature. Uh, 95% of the Amazon has simply not been investigated at all, and those bits that have been investigated uh, are minuscule by comparison. Yet, where investigation is taking place in the Amazon, astonishing finds are being made. Uh, and these are in the Brazilian state of Acre, Acre, uh, and geoglyphs have been found there. And I've recently been with, not all archaeologists um, are as opposed to my work as you and your colleagues, Flint. But I've been with Marty Parsonen, uh, who's a leading archaeologist studying the Amazon. I've been with Alceo Ranzi, who's a geographer from, from Brazil, and with uh, Fabio de Valles Filho, who's a LIDAR expert. Uh, this is very recently, actually. Um, and uh, we did some LIDAR work uh, in that area. And this is, the kind of, this is the kind of thing that's being found, huge, enormous uh, earthworks, geoglyphs, which were we to find them in the West, we would recognize them as almost as henges. Uh, the amount of workmanship that goes into these earth earthworks is stunning. 
um, and they are very precise, very geometrical. You have squares. Here you have a square enclosing a circle. Um, more of the same. Uh, Tequino is a gigantic site. These, these are just scratching the surface. The, the archaeologists who are working on these sites believe that there are thousands and thousands more of these geoglyph sites that they're just touching the edge. When I was there with them uh, back uh, in September 23, I think it was, we actually did a bit of LIDAR work. We put up a drone with LIDAR attached and we found new, we found new geoglyphs, geoglyphs that had not been found before within a mile of geoglyphs that had been found but still covered by canopy rainforest. And Marty and Alceo are of the view that if we were to really investigate the whole of the Amazon from this point of view, we would have to revolutionize our whole view of human history. That archaeology has hardly touched this incredibly important region. Uh, and therefore, I do not believe that archaeology can tell us that it can rule out any possibility of a lost civilization while it has so failed to serve the Amazon and is only now beginning to do so. And those who are doing that work are convinced that there's much, much, much more to be found. Thousands more of these geoglyphs, for example. 27 million square kilometers uh, of the Earth's surface was um, above water during the Ice Age and is underwater today. So yes, there has been quite a bit of marine archaeology. I, I, I think Nick Fleming says there's about 3,000 sites have been investigated underwater um, over, the, over the years. But it's, again, you're looking at a tiny fraction of 1% uh, of the submerged areas that have been investigated. I was very excited when I saw this, but it turned out that it was just another search for shipwrecks. Um, and fortunately, some new work is now being done. Archaeologists are beginning to look at the submerged area, Doggerland, for example, between what is now Britain and, and continental Europe, uh, a submerged landmass, are beginning to investigate this. It wouldn't surprise me at all if, if lots of evidence of hunter-gatherers is found in these submerged areas. I would expect that to be the case. But to say that enough work has been done to rule out the possibility of a lost civilization seems to me absurd when we're dealing with 27 million square kilometers. Mm -hmm.